Hi everybody, this is Victoria. Welcome back to another new episode of Discovering Art Together. Today we are going to learn about Rokoko art. So this is also very new to me as well. I'm super excited to jump into this and learn a lot more together with you guys. So we're going to discover what is Rokoko art and also some of the characteristics of what Rokoko has to offer and also learning a little bit of the main events and things that are very important in the Rokoko time and then also the very famous and influenced artists that made Rokoko a beautiful and wonderful era. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. So let's answer our first question over here, and that is what is Rococo, or precisely what is Rococo art style and period? So Rococo painting started around the 18th century in Paris, Paris, where the French more or less started this new era in the 18th century. So the era lasted around 1750 to 1780 and it was mostly centered in France and later on kind of became more popular throughout Europe. The word rococo derives from the French word rocaille which means for rubbles or rocks. Now we want to ask ourselves, why in the world would they name an era based on rubbles and rocks? Well, here is the meaning behind it. Basically, when they mention rubble or rocks, is basically they refer it to pebbles or shell work in fountains or grottoes, and describes the serpentine patterns often seen in the Rococo era. So that's pretty cool and interesting where Rococo had this very interesting style because if you did not know, Rococo came right after the Baroque era and time period and then after Rococo, Neoclassicism replaced Rococo. Now let's talk a little bit about the characteristics of what makes Rococo painting Rococo. So basically, Rococo's characteristics have soft colors and bright pastel colors. Those are one of the most um, common features that Rococo art has in its paintings, and also curvy lines, asymmetrical composition, and also it depicts scenes of love, scenes of nature, um, amoureux encounters, classical myths, and also lighthearted entertainment and youth with a lot of ornate details. So Rococo was like a more playful version compared to the more dramatical Baroque art style that came before it. So it's really interesting how it somewhat evolved from something very serious to something a little bit more more chill, more playful, a little bit more lighthearted. I guess like after for a, like long periods of time of really dramatical stuff, I guess we just want to have a little bit more freedom and exploring a little bit more of pretty colors, um, more imagination and more fantasies of uh, love and nature and so on. There's a common thing where people get kind of confused and wondering what's the big difference from Baroque art and Rococo art since they are quite close together and also where Rococo was born from Baroque art style. So Rococo grew out of the Baroque but was more playful. Both had very amazing architecture featuring lots of ornamentation. However, Baroque is more dramatic while Rococo was light and airy. Rococo was perhaps the most rebellious of design 
style, often described as the final expression of the Baroque movement. It was exceptionally ornamental and theatrical, a style without rules. Generally, religious elements was non-existent in Rococo paintings, so it was very much based on scenes of nature, scenes of love, and also classical myths, and also kind of replacing um, aristocratic people in a story or a, a scene of um, classical mythology. Okay, so now we kind of learned a little bit about what is Rococo, what time period it came after, and also the characteristics of a Rococo painting. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into some of the more well-known artists that you probably have known, but they are from this particular era. And let's go ahead and learn about the founder and father of Rococo art. And his name is Jean-Antoine Watteau. So Jean-Antoine Watteau was born in 1684 to 1721. It's credited with the birth of Rococo, focusing on garden parties and other outdoor events as his primary subject matter and so much more. So he was the initial founder and father that created Rococo art and also inspired many of the other very important and amazing artists from this time and era. François Boucher, which was born in 1703 to 1770, was also a very famous artist. One of his, or a few of his very famous paintings over here are The Triumph of Venus, The Brown Odalisk, and also Madame Bergeret. Bergeret. Is it Madame Bergeret or Bergeret? I can't remember. But please, please do correct me and comment below if you know how to pronounce this name. And then another very amazing artist from the Rococo period is Jean-Honoré Fragonard. So Fragonard was really famous for his beautiful painting of the swing and also the bolt. So these are the two iconic paintings other than François Boucher's paintings and also definitely Jean-Antoine Watteau. And Fragonard's painting is also really beautiful where he kind of depicts a lot of story and also lighthearted story and also love stories in his paintings and also adding a little bit of a fantasy and mythological theme to it but replacing the main character with a existing um, and also present noble. And then last but not least, we also have Jean Simeon Chardin, which you guys can check out one of his paintings in another video of mine over here. You can go ahead and click on that. It's about how to crop out and also reframe the composition in a painting. So it's like a mix of composition with photography a little bit and I what I did is that I took Chardin's painting and I kind of recreated the composition by kind of cropping off on the painting itself so check out that video if you guys are interested it's it's on like one of the slides over here um, but anyways back to Jean Simon Chardin so Jean Simon Chardin was also a very well known artist in the Rococo period though, but he mostly concentrated on still life and mastering more of that other than the more playfulness of Rococo, but like for example that painting, the soap bubbles, was probably one of the ones where he added a little bit of more storyline and also adding more um, playfulness into his painting. Okay, so that is it for today. So thank you so much for watching this brand new episode about the Rococo time and era. And I hope you guys enjoyed this new episode and learned a little bit more about the Rococo period. And I sure did because I didn't really know much about the Rococo. I've heard of it and I've known some artists from it but never really dived into um, what exactly Rococo was and it was really interesting to kind of dig in a little bit more about it, learn more information and how it started, where it originated and what it focused on. So yeah, okay, super excited to share more fun 
discoveries about art with you guys. I'm hoping to kind of do like the whole series with um, all the different timelines and um, eras of uh, and also different art styles and art periods with you guys. So stay tuned for the next episode. If anybody can guess what the next episode is going to be, it's actually about neoclassicism. Yeah, but um, super excited to learn about that. I don't know much about that era, but I love learning new stuff. I am on a life journey of learning more about art and just kind of developing my knowledge about art history and then just kind of being inspired by a lot of the older eras that will kind of come into mind and play into some of my own personal works and paintings. But yeah, okay, I shall see you guys in the next episode in next week. So stay tuned, have fun, stay creative, and oh, let's not forget a little mini exercise for you guys. So today's exercise is to also kind of discover a little bit more about Rokoko and trying to see if you can find some of your new favorite artists in this time and era because there's a lot of beautiful art in here if you do like a lot of storytelling you like romantic scenes and you have a lot of love for nature and natural scenes of flowers and forests and stuff and you also like bright pastel colors as well this might be the art style for you and you can also incorporate this and try to create something new into um your own artwork and all that Okay, awesome. Well, thanks again, and I shall see you next time. Take care, stay creative, have fun, happy practicing, happy learning, and see you in the next episode. Bye!